Ten Hag's very first season at Manchester United took him to third place. And Manchester City have just won the treble with 115 charges against their name. And the treble doesn't even matter. And I'm not salty at all. So we're here today to get United their very own treble and a proper treble as well. And this time with Eric Ten Hag at the helm. We've created a 4-3-3 for his 23-24 season. We're going to be signing as many realistic transfers as possible. So stick around to see United lift a proper treble. What's going on there guys? Kenfi here and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to another rebuild from myself. And this is actually my fourth Manchester United rebuild of the year. But it's a brand new season and... I love United, as you can tell. I've got a framed 99 Champions League treble winning top, which is why I'm so salty that we are not now the only team to win a treble. But I can admit, Manchester City, well done. You brought a treble. Congratulations. We're going to be today making a proper treble. Now, you can see I'm on the proper database, the updated database as well as released. Uh, and we're going to be having some good fun on this one. I've got it so transfers can be made. We are in charge of Manchester United, but there is a key man who is still at the club. And that man is Eric Ten Hag. Now, he is going to be uh, basically the assistant doing the training and the matches, etc. But in terms of transfers, it is all going to be through us. And I'm going to be signing players for Ten Hag to stick in to this wonderful 4-3-3 that I have made, which I think is going to be the formation Manchester United use next season. Now, we're going to go through this right away. It's going to be a sweeper keep on support in goal. Tackle harder. We need a new goalkeeper, don't we? I mean, even if the game against Inter Milan, Man City, Onana, outrageous with his feet and apparently he's available. We could have signed him already watching this. We could also be on like Qatar, so that would be fantastic. Uh, winger on the back on support on the right-hand side will stay wider. Wing back on support on the left-hand side will stay wider and dribble more because Luke Shaw loves a little dribble. Uh, two ball-playing defenders, both on defend and anchor man in DM with no further instructions. A box-to-box -box midfielder on the left-hand side of the centre mid roll. Shoot less often, get further forward, move into channels and tackle harder. That is going to be the cover star, Mason Mount. You need to come to United. I think we're going to get this deal over the line. And that is going to be his role. Ahmed Zala on attack on the right-hand side of centre-mid. Dribble more and tackle harder. Bruno Fernandes is going to be an absolute pivotal player for United still. Roam for a position and tackle harder on the right-hand side. Inside forward on attack. The Marcus Rashford role with shoot more often. Roam for a position and tackle harder. And then the Vatons forward up top on attack. We'll take fewer risks. Roam for a position and tackle harder. The mentality is... Uh, to attacking. I think setting up in this 4-3-3 system, we're going to be able to be a mid-ball front foot next season. Two very progressive number eights. It's going to be superb. And I cannot wait for next season because it's going to be great fun. We've got a fairly wide attacking uh, whip. We've got player out of defence, shorter passing directness, a high, high tempo, be more expressive and low crosses. Take short kicks, distribute quickly, uh, counter and counter press. Now I have got take short kicks on, but I have not put it to distribute anywhere because I think whatever uh, sent, uh, goalkeeper we decide to sign, I think he's going to be able to distribute pretty much anywhere. Uh, and our possession, I've got it as a high press system, prevent the short goal distribution, press much more often and get stuck in. And the way I have done finances wise is obviously we are going to be getting brand new owners, whether that's Jim Ratcliffe or Qatar. I've not gone full Qatar. I've not gone for Jim Ratcliffe money. I've simply cleared the debt and given me an extra 70 million in transfers. I think you guys would admit that was fair. I had 15 million pounds to spend, which is absolutely nothing. I think whatever owner comes in, he's going to clear, well, they're going to clear this debt. So that is the play that I have gone with. Uh, sadly, I haven't sort of updated the board. So it still shows as that ratty little Avram Glazer is the owner of the club. That is not the case in this universe. Change that name to Sir Jim Ratcliffe or to Sheikh Jassim. So um, I've tried to go sort of in the middle of the two. We've got £75 million to spend and we're going to be doing this as realistically as possible. We're going to be selling a few boys. We're going to be keeping a few lads around. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is De Gea is not staying around. But let's get in to the Season 1 transfers for a realistic rebuild of Manchester United. Before we go any further and I'll show you the transfers I think we're making for this summer. If you guys can make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel as well and follow on anything you can. I've got a second channel where I talk about things all United. I've done the preview and a review for the uh, the FA Cup final. Throughout the summer we're going to do transfer news when we get a transfer and we're doing sort of sporadic videos on there. As I go back in to full-time full uh, full job-wise, we are obviously doing this 
pretty much as a full-time job on the side as well so any support you can give is amazing and if you do feel like you can give any more support there is also a patreon down below as well there's a you know two pound tier general support tier there's a rebuild file tier where you guys we are to pick up this rebuild as well um, and that is only available to patreon members so head down there and if you are available to give any further support you're absolute legends like brandon and scott here and anyone anyone that has signed up in the sort of last week your name won't be on here yet i am pre-recording as like i said starting a brand new job it's going to be mental to try and do both of these full time but i'm not going to let you guys down and that is going to be what we are doing now first of all the free signings we have made in this part of the window is rasmus hoyland this is a striker i believe manchester United should definitely head out and sign uh, 30 million pounds we've paid for him i think it's gonna be about that in real life to be honest uh, 40 million euros i think is what being sort of labeled so 30 million quid uh, 20 years of age six foot three hoyland versus harland just sounds fun as well and he's a united fan which is even better so rasmus hoyland is our signing he's already worth 80 million pounds what an absolute demon we have brought in there and the other one another absolute demon kim min j again highly highly linked with manchester united in real life uh, we decided to trigger his release clause 39 million pounds i'll be surprised if we don't do this one in real life um there's talk it's between kim and jay and axel diassi from as monaco i've gone with kim and jay i think he's the better of the two signings and an absolutely solid center back as well and the last signing is i've gone big on the goalkeeper diogo costa has come in i did reveal earlier david Tejaya not sticking around we are going to need a ball playing goalkeeper and diogo costa is fantastic i really like this guy in real life get a few wiggly moments in the world cup but I think he's the man we need to go out and bring in. Spend big on him. £65 million. He is in. Mason Mount has also been brought in for £82 million. Now, this one, I had to finance a lot of it down the line. I've already made well my, my decision that Mount was going to be in and be that left side of box midfielder. He was the last player I brought. £10 million is what you paid uh, to start with £70 million over finances so that was a little bit unrealistic but i think finances wise i probably sold myself a little bit short uh, and recouping money for some of these manchester United players was absolutely impossible but 82 million pounds has been brought in mason mount i hope we don't pay that much in real life but to be honest it wouldn't surprise me it's manchester united at the end of the day uh, and another box to box midfielder i have brought in is mateus franco just 10 million pounds on him he's a youngster from flamengo a very very good player uh, and i'm very happy to bring him in as well um, i did think i also brought in uh adrian rabio but i think that was actually in the tactic save so rabio is not in we did manage to sell a few players we wanted to bring in 57 million pounds overall 15 million for harry Maguire, 10 million for brandon williams who by the way absolute legend for what he done on saturday night uh, eight million pounds for fred uh, Fredrickson has left. Kobe Mainu out on loan to Bristol City. Fagunda Palestri out on loan to Sheffield United. Charlotte Chorotire and Alvaro Fernandez back out on loan to Middlesbrough as well. Ethan Laird to Coventry. Uh, Isaac Hansen Aaron's got out on loan. Donny van der Beek could not get 10 million for him. So he's got out on loan to Spurs. Charlie McNeil on loan to uh, Northampton. Charlie Savage has left the club. Alex Tellers to Lenz. Bailly to Olympiacos. Dean Henderson, 5.5 million to set out Real San Sebastian gutted about that should have got at least 20 million for him so dan iqbal i did actually sell for nine million pounds we have got a buyback on him i believe of like i think it's eight million so it's not even that much i might be lying but it's 50 percent buyback and i think there's a buyback clause in him as well and Anthony alanga also going to lens for 11 million pounds which means the few players we couldn't get rid of um we you know it was a tough tough window but Diego Costa is going to be our goalkeeper. Diego Delo at right back. Rafa Varane and Martinez are two starting centre backs. Luke Shaw at left back. Casemiro in DM. Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandez, the two midfielders. Anthony as that right winger. Rashford as that left winger. And full trust has gone into Rasmus Hoyland to lead the line for Manchester United. Now, I don't think we're going to go ahead and get Kane this summer. I think it's going to be a little bit too much money. You never know. If we do get the Qataris come in, it's very possible we could get Harry Kane. But I think it's more likely we sign someone like Hoyland this summer uh, and keep Martial about as his backup. And then eventually bring in Kane next summer on a free contract. Garnacho is looking fantastic as well. He's going to be the backup to Marcus Rashford this season. Uh, Sancho, the backup to Anthony. Franca and Eriksen in midfield. McTominay I decided to keep hold of. Uh, I couldn't get Rabio in on a free, actually. I remember that now. He chose Liverpool, I think, instead. So McTominay stayed around. Malassia, Kim Min Jae, Lindelof, wan and Matty Kovar as the backup goalkeeper to Diego Costa. Dijon Bernard, Diallo, Hannibal, and Dan Gore as well are going to be staying around to deputise the squad as the young 
youngsters. I'm a huge United fan in real life, so I'm quite you know, passionate about the youth and I believe we've got a lot of young talent at this squad. So I'll be interested to see how well we can develop them as well. We're going to be going ahead in this rebuild as far as it takes us, as long as it takes us to win our very own treble. The Premier League, the Champions League and the FA Cup. We're not doing the Liverpool treble and winning the League Cup as well. That doesn't count. That's not a real treble, is it? So in the rebuild, uh, in the tactics scene, we won the league in the first season. Let's go ahead and see if we can win the league again with this side. Now I've got the signs in. Let's go GDMU. <laughs> Well, the first season has not ended with any silverware. Season one of Eric Ten Hag in real life, obviously, we ended up winning the Carabao Cup. Getting to the final of the FA Cup, well, second season syndrome has not gone quite as well. We've ended up coming third in the Premier League, same as real life, and actually four points better off as well, which is fantastic to see. A 56 goal difference hanging with Liverpool and Manchester City. Liverpool, a massive revival this season. Manchester City do Manchester City type things. I hope they didn't win the Champions League. They didn't. AC Milan, who beat us in the semi-finals, ended up winning that one. FA Cup wise, quarter final by Arsenal, and that was eventually won by Arsenal. 6-0 winners against Bournemouth, and the Carabao Cup knocked out by Wolves, who got to the final and lost to Liverpool. So not the greatest of seasons in terms of silverware, but one person that had an absolutely barnstorming season is Rasmus Hoyland. 36 goals in 51 appearances in the league, 27 in 35. What an absolute demon he is on Football Manager. Fantastic talent, and he's done very, very well. Bruno Fernandes with 21 goals, 21 assists, and in the league, 15 and 14. An unreal season alongside Mason Mount. Eight goals and nine assists sitting next to him. Five and seven in the league. A decent in enough season, you know, 49 appearances as that box to fielder has done very well. Marcus Rashford, 21 goals, 7 assists, a slight drop off to his, you know, season this season in real life, but still a very, very good year. And Alejandro Garnacho with 8 goals and 6 assists. I love to see that. 6 and 5, 25 appearances, 37 appearances off the bench this season. So Garnacho, you know, a very, very good player. It's difficult to really get him into the team. I think this is the only thing that might hamper him in real life is Rashford is so so good how does he get in on that left hand side I don't know it's going to be baffling to see how this man develops he's actually chosen Spain this universe as well which is a little bit interesting uh, eight goals and 13 from just 18 starts for Ericsson eight goals 15 assists for Anthony seven goals 12 assists for Sancho and seven goals for big Kim Min Jae as well what an absolute demon uh, he has been in the data hub we're looking at 2.61 goals per game 1.13 conceded per game as well is actually quite decent uh, in terms of the team overall stats we scored the most goals with 99 a little lot to 99 you know this is a treble winning campaign well treble winning rebuild 99 1999. It all makes sense. Viewers conceded. We were down in eighth position because he had maybe too many goals. Possession wise, 56% possession down in seventh. We had the most shots all season. So fast, fun, attractive football is what Eric Ten Hag is going to bring to Manchester United. In terms of the low knees, who done the best out here? That's what you want to see. Uh, potential wise, Kobe Mainu, you know, very, very decent. Let's set this to the right bit here so we can actually see what we want to see. You want to see selection info, Will. 39 appearances for Kobe Mainu. That is what this guy needs in real life. 37 for Alvaro Fernandez. Again, it'll be interesting to see if he can ever break in to sort of the Man United squad. Of Tyrrell Malassia and Luke Shaw both doing so well in real life. It'll be interesting to see what we do with Alvaro Fernandez. Isaac Cantelaren getting 16 goals over at Xionbuk in South Korea is quite nice to see. Uh, 43 appearances for Amari Forsen. Reese Bennett doing very well as well. Mark Gerardo doing bits. Ethan Laird. You know, <clears throat> an absolute talent in real life. has just been massively hampered by injuries. Coventry, we're in the Premier League in this sim. Uh, obviously, the playoffs aren't quite up to date uh, as you start this new save. So, yeah, Luton said the championship. They're going to get relegated anyway. They've got 15 points. So, that's exactly what they've done. Burnley with 16. Sheffield United with 21. And Haaland with 40 goals. So, you know, if any of us thought Haaland's, you know, won it all with Man City, he'll just chill next season. Yeah, according to football manager, possibly not. Um, so it's going to be a fun, fun season. Uh, season the next season in real life. I mean, I hope this is sort of where we're sitting again. A bit more of a challenge. If we can swap us and Liverpool in this table, I'll be quite happy with this season and maybe another trophy as well. would be beautiful. Let's see what transfers we can make. We've got lots and lots of money. £174 million pounds to spend. There is absolutely no you know, tomfoolery from myself here. I've simply cleared the debts in what 
an owner is going to do in real life. And I think this shows the financial pull of Manchester United, the sponsors we have, the money we can bring in from merchandise sales and overall Man United will just run itself. Whoever buys us is going to upgrade the stadium, upgrade the training facilities and let us cook really. So £174 million to spend, £583,000 in wage budget as well. Let's go and see what fun we can have in the market, keeping it as realistic as possible. Signing players for Eric Ten Hag, season number two, what signings can we make? Well, I've brought in Eric Ten Hag's man, Durian Timber has been brought in to Manchester United. There was a lot of talk, uh, obviously the summer of his first window, that Timber could be coming to United. We ended up going with the Butcher, and we know how well that went. So Urian Timber has come in for 80 two million pounds from Ajax and he is going to be locked in to this right back position we soon see much of him at center back he is going to be our right back and he's going to be fantastic in this right back role as well as that wing back on support he is going to be an absolute demon there's another couple of signings as well Kenneth Taylor 68 million pounds again from Ajax I didn't actually try and make this the case that we signed Ajax players but Kenneth Taylor has got four star potential uh, he actually was that five star uh, you know the little white star as well he looks unbelievable 16 stamina 17 determination he's probably going to be the replacement for Casemiro in this anchor man role he's got the strength and he's just improved that defensive work a little bit but he is absolutely fantastic as a sign in 22 years of age as well extremely consistent loves a big match and is a true Ten Hag signing Sergei Milinkovic Savic is this 2010 he's coming as well but this time on a free contract a 29 year old has developed into an unbelievable player in real life has been linked to United for as long as I can remember to be honest and that last season I mean this season coming up in real life with Lazio he had a 7.25 average rating didn't renew his contract and we only had to pay 145 grand to get this man in it seemed like an absolute no-brainer to get this done as well loves a big match extremely consistent and you can imagine him next to Bruno Fernandes with Mason Mount as his understudy what an absolute window we've brought in John Ruddy I decided to try and bring in our very own Scott Carson John Ruddy I like him. He qualifies as, you know, English registration. Why not? Um, and the last signing as well is someone that I think is a bit of a, you know, different signing to bring in for Manchester United. And that's Victor Jorquez from Coventry. Obviously, the guy has carried Spur uh, Cop Spurs. Coventry, they're very similar clubs, to be honest. The guy has uh, carried Coventry to, uh, you know, a playoff final. Uh, the last season in real life and has got some fantastic stats on FM. Great aggression, great determination, decent finishing, amazing work rate, good pace. You know, he's only a two-star player, but Rasmus Hoyland has been unbelievable last season. Um, Marcus Rashford, as you know, a backup rotation to him, as well as Victor York Yorkes, could get Garnacho more game time, which leaves our strog, str strog? squad looking extremely, extremely strong. I mean, Costa, Timber, Kimbin J, Martinez, Shaw... Casemiro, Fernandez, Mount, Anthony, Rashford, Hoyland with a bench of Kovar, Dallo, Lindelof, Varane, Malassia, Kobe Mainu, Kenneth Taylor, Milinkovic, Savic, Sancho, Garnacho, Giorquez, Ruddy, Diallo, Christian Eriksen, and Juan Basaka. A very, very strong side here for Manchester United going into season number two. And again, quite realistic in my opinion. In terms of sales, we ended up getting rid of Doddy Van der Beek. Finally, to Napoli for £10 million. It was an absolute slog to get rid of him, but we managed to finally get rid of him. McTominay also left two Spurs for £20 million. Uh, in terms of anyone being released, um, that was last season. Oh, there's a few here. Dijon Bernard and Martial have been released, as well as Tenemegi and Willy Kamawalawa as well have also gone. So it's time for season two. We're back in the big competitions. Another season in the Champions League, this time with its new rules. An FA Cup, Carabao Cup, Premier League. How many trophies can we bring in? Let's get right into it. comments in down below guys how many seasons this is going to take us to win the treble you know how dominant Manchester City are you know how dominant Liverpool are but how many seasons is it going to take this United side to get the treble get it in the comments down below and we'll see if you're correct this season it's a Premier League trophy 83 points level on points with Liverpool we have beat them due to our fantastic goal difference and this time Hoyland didn't even score that many goals only 17 all season just goals from all over the place which is lovely to see a fantastic finish to the season as well and we was top for the last couple of days in the schedule we ended up beating Forest 4-0 Spurs 3-1 on the final day and a fantastic finish to the season Champions League Arsenal seem to be our arch rivals they ended up beating us 
in the quarterfinals. FA Cup quarterfinal by Newcastle. City went on to win that one. But, you know, the other cup, everyone wants to win. Everyone wants the Premier League, the Champions League and the Carabao Cup. Possibly the Carabao Cup at the top of all of them, as we know this season. That, as alongside the, the Bangkok Trophy, are the two biggest in the world. And we've won this one in this season. A 2-0 victory over Manchester City. Out of that, lads, Rasmus Hoyland and Marcus Rashford scoring the goals for us. Harlem with a 6.2 seen that way too much recently in real life as well. Um, but the signings have been fantastic for us, though. 30 goals for Hoyland, 20 goals from centre mid for Milinkovic Savic. 45 appearances he made this season. 16 and 15 for Rashford, 16 and 14 for Anthony, 12 and 16 for Bruno, 9 and 3 for Garnacho, 7 again from Kim Min Jae, 7 and 8 from Sancho, 3 goals, 10 assists from Mason Mount. Amad Diallo has played a few games. Kenneth Taylor, you know, rotating in that DM role, 6 games. Four assists for him as well. Uh, 39 games for Jury and Timber at right back. Uh, Luke Shaw's played 40. Costa's played 61. Um, Corey Maynard's played 3. 26 on the bench. We'd love to see that. Um, has Casemiro played many games? I can't see his name on it. Oh, he's played 44 and got 7 off the bench as well. So I imagine we're now sort of going to see Varane, you know, 38 games. He's coming to the end. Casemiro, 44. He's coming to the end. We've won the Premier League. We've won the Carabao Cup. We've got £160 million to spend. There's a few spoilers in there we might try and bring in for this summer. Imagine you didn't see them. It's probably the best thing I'd say. Finances-wise, £160 million. Lots of money in the bank. No debt. Again, only £80 million in transfer debt. Let's go and see if we can sign uh, Frankie de Jong for this third season, shall we? I mean, you haven't seen that already. Haha, <laughs> I got you. You thought we were signing Frankie de Jong. Well, he rejected us and we didn't get him in. So we've had to go to a few different signings. And number one, the sign we've made is Alejandro Baldi. He was on that screen and he's a fantastic young left back for Barcelona in real life. Again, I can see it being a sort of realistic signing. Barcelona a couple of years are probably not going to be a club. We're going to have to sell absolutely everyone. So we're going to bring in Alejandro Baldi at left back. Just £26 million. Pounds. Ethan Batera, another great young centre back. This guy is five foot nine. He's left footed and he's only 19 years of age. So he sounds like the perfect perfect understudy to Lissandro Martinez who brought him in for £25 million. The next signing is Big Benny Sesco. The guy is just not developed that well at RB Leipzig. Played 27 games, 6 goals, played 15 games, 9 goals. He's bagging in the goals but to be honest hasn't developed as we maybe thought he would have in real life. I mean I don't know what I'm clicking at this point. Look at his overview. He's only got a 2.5 star current ability, a 3 star potential ability and apparently always gets injured. I mean he's currently got a broken lower leg. Fantastic, but signed for just £30 million, a backup to Rasmus Hoyland. Unbelievable signing in that one. And the last one we've made is Desire Dewey. Now, this guy is a 20-year-old centre midfielder, five-star potential, signed from Wren. We've tried to get in before the hype. He's worth £85 million. We've spent 45. He's got two and a half star current ability, five star potential ability, 16 flair, 16 dribbling, 16 agility. We love to see that on Desire Dewey. Looking like an absolutely banging signing. And in terms of players going out as well, Ericsson's gone on a free. Malassi has gone to Benfica for £27.5 million. They go off shit or setting the money on Alejandro Balde. Lindelof has gone to Aston Villa for 25. Van der Beek went last summer as well. And again, in terms of players being released this summer, John Ruddy, we had a great time, mate. You won an effort. You won a Carabao Cup in the Premier League. Good job, son. Will Fish has gone for Kunda Palestri. Didn't quite develop. Toby Collier, Charlie McNeil, and Tom Wooster as well. Sadly for McNeil, again, just doesn't develop very well on this year's game. So. A bit of an odd one. Hopefully that is updated next season. The team for this year is Costa, Timber, Kimbin J, Lissandra Martinez, Luke Shaw, Kenneth Taylor in the six, Bruno, Mount, Anthony, Rashford, Hoyland, Kovar, Dallo, Batera, Varane, Balde make up the backup defence, Casemiro, Dewey, Amalinkovic, Savic, Sancho, Gonacho, Sesco, Mainu, Diallo, Victor, Giorquez. I think it's a very, very strong side. We've still got £53 million to spend and £700,000 in wage budget. I'm not going to be spending it, to be honest, because there's not really much point. In terms of young players coming through as well, we've got an absolute demon in Kevin Day, a Canadian striker, winger. I don't know what he is. He's got great determination, great pace, but only nine finishing. He's come through the academy as well, already worth £40 million. We've got Jordi Forte, an English centre-back slash midfielder. We'll see what he develops into. Um, we've also got Divine Mohamed, a right mid from Ireland. We've got Craig Piers as well. So the Youth Academy again at United is fantastic. We know that. We're the greatest club in the world. Predicted to come third this season. Let's see what we can do for season number three. Back-to-back -back 
Premier League champions. Rasmus Hoyland, 27 goals, 22 wins, 11 draws and 5 losses. What a season for the lads. 88 goals scored overall. Possession-wise, sitting on 56. Conceded-wise, only 36. An unbelievable season in the Premier League. A 2-1 victory in the FA Cup final as well. Ben Sesko and Ahmad Diallo scoring the goals in this one to beat Man City and lift two parts of the treble. The only question is the Champions League. Surely we've not done it already. We've got to a final and we're going to be playing that up next. So the team going into this one then, the Champions League final, is going to be Diego Costa in goal. A back four of Kim and Jay, Martinez, Balde in timber, Casemiro in the six. Ahead of him is Bruno Fernandes and Milinkovic Savic. Anthony on the right, Rash on the left, Hoyland up top and the PSG team three years in. There's some names here that aren't normally there. It's Donnarumma, Hakimi, Marquinhos, Kimbembe, Tavares. Fairly standard. You've then got Agate, who's the sign of real life. Vitinha, Declan Rice, Odegaard, Darwizzi. That's pretty strong. And as well as Kylian Mbappe, obviously, is still here as well. Ten Hag's going to take over the um, press conference and everything like that. And we can just sit here and, you know, listen to this beautiful Champions League music. We'll be back at Old Trafford next season. If you guys want to see any match day vlogs from Old Trafford, you know, subscribe to the second channel because that is where they will be. Um, I'll be letting you guys know on the main channel as well, but when they come out, second channel, we talk all things United, we talk all things football, massive transfers. I need to probably do a Messi video, don't I? Because that's quite a big transfer Messi to the MLS. And speaking of the MLS, there was an old McGuire a few days ago and there is also going to be an Inter Miami rebuild coming up this weekend so look forward to that one let's get right in to this massive massive game right, we've got through the first highlight rubbish where it means absolutely nothing and we're going to go straight now in to a full sort of live video here Marquinhos at the back to Donnarumma to Kim Pembe PSG building out from the back already Hoyland is hot on their heels however Hoyland does dispossess them can he find someone that's not great, that, is it? He does dispossess the back for the defender, but he doesn't end up doing too much with the ball. And he does have his shot blocked and away from a corner. Bruno Fernandes is going to whip this one in. Can we get a header? It's handed easy to Donnarumma. And that's probably going to be the end of that highlight. It is indeed uh, a cagey start to this game. Both teams not really having too many opportunities. Just the one shot, and it was that pretty shocker from Rasmus Hoyland. But we are dominant on possession to start things off, which is nice to see. And Alejandro Balde is on the ball. He finds Marcus Rashford to Martinez to Balde down the left-hand side. He beats Darwizzi like he's not even there. Balde again beats Darwizzi. Whips it in. Hoyland is blocked behind for another corner, but we are on pushing. PSG do not know what to do. We are all over them 15 minutes in. They might as well leave the stadium. Bruno Fernandes, what can you do from this corner? It's a ball in. Martinez doesn't win it. Bruno gets the ball again. Finds Milinkovic Savic. Can he batter it? It's blocked. Oh, it's gone absolutely everywhere. Oh, that was a bit weird. It's, nothing's happened in the end. Um, we're back watching Rice, Odegaard play with the ball. But Rice has given it to Rashford, his teammate. Balde, knock it down the left. He does. Rashford, get it across. He does. Bruno Fernandes. Oh, you've got to be finished it, Bruno. It's saved by Gianluigi Donnarumma. And it's still nil-nil somehow in this game. Bruno Fernandes just two minutes later with the corner ball. He's going to whip it in. Who's going to get there on it? It's not Kim and Jay. It drops to Savage to Rashford. Oh, it's been blocked again in a way. Press them in. Oh, we've not got enough passion. No passion, no fight, no desire. It's still nil-nil 21 minutes in. That is a dominant, dominant start to the game, whether. PSG are going to try and build out from the back. Can we get another mistake out of them? That's the question. Probably not two in 20 minutes. That would be a bit outrageous. Rice... Just gives to the ball again. Declan Rice, do you want to come to United? Rashford on the ball. Rashford. Rashford, mate. You better fix up because that's an average chance you bottled there. Sticking it over the bar. 26 minutes in. It's been a good game for us so far. Mbappe with a free kick. Loops it in. Kim Min Jae does head it clear. Mbappe's going to get back on this one again, however. He's going to burst on the right-hand side. Do not bring him down. Rashford. That's superb. And the ball pen abilities now of Costa. You saw it there. He finds big timber to the right-hand side. He finds Kim Min Jae to Bruno Fernandes. He's going to turn and find Anthony. He's going to do a great ball over the top to Rasmus Hoyland, who goes through on goal. He blasts it. Donnarumma saves it and is cleared for another corner. We've got to start taking these chances. 30 minutes in. We are absolutely dominant in this game. Bruno Fernandes with a corner ball. Whips it in. Oh, Kim Min Jae won the header, but he puts it wide. Another golden opportunity for these lads. Look at that XG chart. 
It's absolutely off the scales. It's only 31 minutes into this game as well. Declan Rice, Fine Star Wizzy, Kim Min Jay. And that's fantastic. Rashford, Hoyland. What can you do with it? Slip it. Oh, he should have cut it in behind. Balde does go for that pass eventually. And it's just going to be cleared with Hakimi on the ball. Who's going to set it back to Donnarumma. Why didn't you miss that and let it go in, Donnarumma? It's a long clearance forward. Kim and Jay take a touch. You don't teach that sort of stuff. What a back line this would be. Balde down the ball now on the left-hand side. What's he going to do with it? He finds a ball into Rashford. He finds Hoyland. Hoyland scores, but it's the offside. Rasmus Hoyland, what a finish. 32 minutes in. He sticks it in the back of the net. But is it enough? to give us the lead. It's a goal review. Is he offside? Oh, he's offside. I thought he timed it to perfection for goal number 45, but it was just off. Oh, Rasmus. It's so close, but it's not quite enough. PSG are holding on by the skin of their teeth here. Tavares is battered already, to be fair to him. 40 minutes in, we should be leading this game, but PSG have a corner. It's Vettinia on the ball. He's going to whip it in. Can we head it clear? Oh, we don't even need to. Look what a goalkeeper who comes out and claims it does to a side. He gets it. He's going to drop it to his feet, isn't he? Please, Costa. Just do the full shebang. Oh, I didn't want to see that. A long ball is not what we wanted to see. But it does end up with Bruno winning the ball. And Anthony now, who is injured and is going to have to be taken off half-time. Timber finds Anthony to Bruno. Back to Kim min -Jay. This is superb. Kim and Jay to Bruno, uh, to Timber, to Anthony. Find it. Oh, it's on the ball. I wanted, but Balde is on the ball. Can he set in Rashford behind him? He sets in Hoyland. Oh, it's another save from Donnarumma. And Hoyland's had so many chances. Bruno Fernandes now with a free kick. It's whipped in. What's happening? It's cleared away. And Vitinha is on the ball. Donnarumma clears it long. And again, Martinez. A little touch and we'll bring it down and we'll build up from the back again. He switches to Durian Timber, his old best mate over there. Timber finds Anthony down the right. Anthony, get it back on that left foot and whip it in. He does that. Rashford! Rashford with a goal! And it's 1-0 to Manchester United. His 21st of the season. And that is a very important goal just before half-time. What a finish there from Marcus Rashford. And we've done it. One minute added on. We're going to be going in at half-time leading. And that is massive for this first half. 11 shots to their three. We are on top in this one, but probably not as on top as we would like to be. It's going to be a highlight straight from kickoff. This can change the game very quickly. It's Martinez on the ball. He finds Balde down the left-hand side. If we get a second now, it's game over. It's Rashford down the left. He wants to bring a Champions League back to Manchester. He finds Milinkovic Savage. He flicks it up. Dogs it back to Balde. Whips it in. Bruno Fernandes. And Donnarumma saves it. Just 25 seconds into this half. We haven't brought Anthony off just yet because he is on the 7.6 rate and doing very, very well, to be fair to him. Balde now on the ball. Finds Casemiro. Balde. Can you whip it in? Can you whip it in, buddy? He can. Bruno's there again. Doesn't win that one. Rice clears it. It does drop to Timber. To Anthony. <sighs> Maybe now is the time, Anthony. It's 50 minutes in. He's tried his injury after half time. Oh, but look at the passion. And then he's lost it again. We know Anthony's got a lot of passion. Ah, oh, Tavares does beat his man. Timber. Tavares down the left hand side. Can he whip it in? He can. Oh, Costa with a save. Good job, Costa. Good job, son. Holds it into his chest. And now after 50 minutes in, we are going to take Anthony off. And we're going to bring on... Oh, I really want to bring on... Garnacho's coming on. Garnacho's going to do it. He's going to ruin Nuno Tavares at that left-hand side there. Odegaard looking back to Darwizzi. He finds Rice. Burst into the box. And we've somehow cleared the ball. And Garnacho's going to bring it clear. He finds a long ball to Hoyland. And he was going to go for on goal, but he's not quite... I genuinely thought Rice was about to break our hearts there. We're going to encourage the lads. An hour in. I think it's almost time as well for Rashford to go up top. Bruno on the ball here. Can he whip it in? He can. Kim and Jay. Has it got in? Oh, it's not got in. Kim and Jay's hit the post. It's rolled across the line. And no one's reacted to it. And it's cleared. What an absolute Champions League final this is. Oh, we've got another highlight. I was about to make a change, but Bruno keeps it in. Whips it into Rashford, who heads it over the bar. And Rashford is going to be on fire today. He's going to go up top. Hoyland's going to come off. Sancho's going to come on. We're going to put Garnacho on the left, Sancho on the right. And we're going to bring on Mason Mount as well for Malinkovic Savage and see what he can do in this last half an hour with a cover star. Can Mason Mount bring it home for United? Can he bring in the treble that he's probably going to promise when he signs that deal on the dotted line? It goes back into Kembembe to right, to Marquinhos. Rashford now pressing from the front. Garnacho on the left wins the interception. Can he find a great ball? 
that's fantastic. He finds Rashford. Can he get in the box? Oh, it's a shocking touch from Rashford. Absolutely shocking. And we are out of position. And Declan Rice can bring it clear for PSG. But Mason Mount beats his old best mate to that one. And he finds Sancho down the right-hand side. Whoops it. Oh, it's a poor ball from Sancho. Oh, that was a chance there. And PSG now might have a counter-attack. And it's Mbappe on the ball. Takes it wide. Cuts it back in to Odegaard. And it breaks the Manchester United hearts at 1-1 in the 60. Eighth minute, Mbappe with the ball cut back. Fair play with the finished with Martin Odegaard. Not what we wanted to see, but it's what happened. And Mbappe, you know, a lot of quality in this side. Martinez not having the greatest game today. Maybe we bring on Rafa Varane for that experienced head. And Oh, not for Kim Min-J. Oh, we don't want to do that, do we? We want to get Kim Min-J back on for Martinez. Move Martinez to the left. Kim Min-J to the left-hand side. And we'll bring on Dallow as well for Timber. Get a little bit of attackiness down this right-hand side with Sancho. 20 minutes to go. This game has been energetic. It's been 11 minutes of recording already. It's a long, long game. But there's been highlight central, I've got to say that. Rice, a poor pass. And Dallow intercepts this one. What are you going to do with Dallow? He's just fresh on. Surely he's going to beat his man. He finds Bruno, who beats his man. Whips it in. It's cleared. It drops to Sancho, to Mason Mount, to Dallow, to Casemiro. To Alejandro Boulder down the left-hand side. To Mason Mount. Boulder again on the ball. Oh, Vettinia dispossesses him. And it, oh, surely Rashford, wake up. Oh, Neely. So close. Sancho dispossesses. He finds Bruno. Is the goal going to be from here? Bruno whips it in. God, Acho. Oh, so many chances. Just not putting the ball in the back of the net. This has gone on a lot longer than I expected it to. I've got to say that. Ten minutes to go in this game. We've encouraged the lads. Can we bring it home? It's 1-1 against a team who we know love to win games and break hearts. PSG. We've got another highlight. It's Dallo. He goes short to Sancho. Don't lose the ball. Dallo. Bruno. Casemiro. Loves a winner. Sancho on the ball to the right-hand side. Oh, it's a shocking touch. Sancho. You're still letting me down three years into the future, my son. Oh, It's going to be Bruno on the ball to whip it in. Can we get a header on this one and make it 2-1 in the 87th minute? Bruno Fernandes. Come on. A lot of time wasting going on. It's classic Bruno, let's be honest. He whips it in. It's cleared by Rice. Sancho, get it down. Sancho, please. <sighs> Thank God. Thank God. Right, 88 minutes. We're going to go to extra time, aren't we? We're going to go to extra time. I've not planned for this in the length of the video, but it looks like we're going to extra time. We're going to have to... I think you guys want to see this all roll through. You, you don't want to see highlights. You want to see a full gameplay of this Champions League final. And with what a final it's been as well. I mean, Zer Emery is now on the field for PSG. He finds Marvin Bard. And Sancho makes the foul. And we're going to move on. Oh, am I, am I on extended? I'm on extended. Oh, extended highlights. Who even cares? It's been a great game anyway. I thought I'd put it on key. Who cares? Gonzalez finds Mbappe. Odegaard. We might as well keep on extended now, might we? Varane, Casemiro, Kim Min Jae, Sancho on the board on the right hand side. What's he going to do with it? What's he going to do with it? He's running. He's doing very well. He sets it back to Dallo. Dallo. He's won us a Champions League game against PSG before. Go on, Acho. My eyes lit up. You probably saw the elation on my face there as I thought Garnacho was going to put it in for United. Donnarumma to Kim Pembe. He gets it into Zer Emery. Rashford, a great press. Bruno Fernandes bursts through, and it's a shocking finish. We have, if we don't win this game, it is all down to how bad we have been in front of goal. And it's a corner ball from Vitinha for PSG in the 100th minute. He whips it in. Kim Pembe's at the back post. Varane wins the header. And Mbappe on the ball against Garnacho. Who's better? Definitely Garnacho. Maybe not defensively, however. It is clear to Vitinha again, who does find Odegaard. Who finds Mbappe. Mbappe, great save from Costa. And as 100 minutes in, we're still going strong here in this game. A 2.36 XG. <sighs> I'm sweating. It's 30 degrees outside. And we are in the game of full manager that we've always wanted to play. Rashford to Mount to Garnacho to start this second half of extra time if this goes to penalties we're going to be absolutely written off I tell you the stress levels I wish I had the, the Fitbit on we'd be sitting at 200 heart rate I'm telling you that now Sancho does win the corner for United to start us off in this second half extra time it's probably going to come to absolutely nothing but we shall see Bruno Fernandes whipping the ball in he's probably going to waste as much time again as possible being Bruno he does whip it in eventually and Kim and Jay hits the crossbar again we deserve to win this game and if we don't, it's our own fault. I'm telling you that right now. We have made the changes we want to make. 
You never change up. Might make us Kenneth Taylor, but it does make us a little bit more weak at the back. It's Vatinia on the corner. He whips it in. Costa brings it out. Cool, calm and collected. We are going to bring on Kenneth Taylor and DM. We are. He's going to come on and hold it down in there. Casemiro has run his work today, but we're going to bring on some fresh young legs. Baku with a header. It's an F1 track, isn't it? Bruno Fernandes does very, very well. He does find Garnacho eventually as well. And he sets it back to Rafa Varane. A great switch of play to Diogo Dello down this right-hand side. Can we find Sancho? Why is he not making the run? He has eventually. It's a little bit slow, but Sancho, I've never seen such a more realistic representation of the station of a player in my life. Bruno Fernandes! With that bottom screen coming up with a sub, I thought it was a goal. Oh, I thought Bruno had done it. It's Mbappe with a free kick. Is it cleared? What have you done? Oh, Balde, good defensive work. Great defensive work with 10 minutes to go. Extended highlights is a lot longer than key highlights. We're up to 15 minutes. I hope you guys are enjoying this. You know, rebuild slash Champions League final bonanza. Mbappe on the ball with the corner. Can he find anything? It's whipped in. It's a good... Oh, is it cleared? Can we get it cleared? <sighs> Koulibaly hits the side net and then five to go in this game. It is coming down to the wire. Bruno Fernandes. Can he get it up and down over the wall? It would be quite something to win a Champions League final from here. From Bruno Fernandes. Oh, Donnarumma tips it past the post. And it's another corner ball to Manchester United. Wow, Bruno. What can you do? What can you do, Bruno? Can you get it in the box? He can. Varane is headed down to Garnacho. Oh, Garnacho, a little bit of fight about your son. It's only three to go in the Champions League final. We're going to go to penalties. We're going to go to penalties. It's penalties. Let, 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 God, let Ten Hag do it. You do it, Eric. You do it all, son. Hand it over to Eric. You've been the man to get us here, Eric. Can you keep it going? And Mbappe with the first penalty. Diego Costa, this is where you make your money, son. And back. Oh, I thought he saved it. Oh, I thought he saved it. It's Bruno Fernandes first up for us. Can Bruno stick it in the back of the net? There's so much passion going on. Bruno, he blasts it into the top bins. Should we change this to be behind the goal? I think that'd be better, wouldn't it? For these few penalties here. Change it behind goal. Where is it? There it is. Look now, we got passion. Gonzalez, Costa. He's earned his money. The behind the goal switch. And Rashford to step up. Can he put it back for 2-1 and put us in the lead? Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford in the Champions League finals. Missed this penalty. Oh, my good Lord. It's Talisca for PSG. This is an absolutely wild game. Anderson Talisca. He blasts it over. Maybe it's the camera angle. Mount. Quickly, Mount, let me change the camera angle to, t to TV. Is it the camera angle that's putting everyone off? Mason Mount, blast it home. He had. Look, it's the camera angle. Confirmed. Don't let penalties be taken behind the goal. But when it's them, we'll go back behind the goal. Agate, miss it again. Prove me correct, Agate. Oh, it's not correct. It's a complete conspiracy theory gone wrong. Uh, Kenneth Taylor recently brought on. He's going to blast this home. And he full confidence in young Kenneth to put this one ahead. Kenneth Taylor. Oh, we're going to be one penalty away from the treble. What a game this has been. 18 minutes of recording. I hope you guys will stick around and watch this because this has been some passion. This has been quite the recording. Kim Pembe is the man for PSG. Can he do it? Make sure to like the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel and all that wonderful stuff as we're going to bring home a treble for a Diego Costa save. Oh, we haven't. Who's it going to be? Just step up and score the goal. Be Garnacho. Be Alejandro. Who's it going to be? It's Jaden Sancho. Oh, my God. Jaden Sancho for the fifth and final hopefully penalty for Manchester United. Can he score and bring a trophy home? Jason Sanchez, Jaden Sancho, you know what to do, my son. Bring it home. Jaden Sancho misses. The roller coaster of emotions carries on. It's Warren Zare Emery for PSG. Oh, he scores it. Oh, my God. <laughs> the absolute emotions is incredible. Garnacho, please, after all this, we're changing back. We're changing back. TV camera. Garnacho, step up, son. If Garnacho scores this, we need to win. Come on, Alejandro. Please, do not let me down. We might count out some of this running. Garnacho with a penalty and long run up, and he blasts it into the bottom corner. Marquinhos now for PSG. 
Can he score it? Marquinhos steps up. Right-footed. Hits the post. <sighs> please, please, please. Finish it here, lads. Who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? It's Diogo Dallo. I trust him. I trust Diogo Dallo with all my heart. I trusted Sancho as well. But Dallo is the man I trust. <sighs> Diogo Dallo for the Champions League final when Manchester United have won the treble. Now, this video has gone on way longer than I wanted it to. But this is what you're here for. The Champions League music. United with the treble winning. Eric Ten Hag, 4-3-3 tactic. This one is with no 115 charges. This one is pure passion. Eric Ten Hag has done the job. We're going to lift the trophy. I lost our head. United are back at the very top of football and hopefully they will be soon. Make sure to like the video, the guys. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my second channel as well. And I'll speak to you next time.